Hello everyone, this is JPL, and today I'm joined with... Christopher. And we are podcast naming brackets. So anyway, Christopher, how are you doing? Doing fine. Yes. For those who do not know, um, this is the last Monday of the school semester and yeah. my last year in co- uh, last Monday. Well, it's your last day of like classes, finals. Yeah. yeah, tomorrow I graduate. Yes. So I know. As it relates to this podcast, this potentially could be the last time we record in person. Yeah. Potentially. The, most likely in person the last time. For a while. Yeah. Um, I'm checking my email right now, but I haven't heard back from Focus on Family yet, mm-hmm. but I'm bound to hear this week. Regardless if I get it or not, I just, like, first off, I can't drive, <laughs> you know, um, but, no, I didn't get an email from Focus yet. Um, okay. I can't drive, I don't want you to feel like you have to drive me every week, plus I don't know if I'd want to do it every week right now. Drive you every week to where? To record. Okay. You know? Oh, yeah, sure. Um... I'm driving my car right now, so yeah, that's our uh, that's the your ASMR, ASMR for right today. Now. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, so all that to say, um, things are changing, amping up, closing down. Yeah. And going around. All in that order. <laughs> Not in all the ways we'd expect it to. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's is changing. It's different now. Mm-hmm. We're tired. We're just very tired. We, like we both have like one more final. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At the same time. And we both have one more final to do. Uh-huh. And that's what we're getting ready to head towards. So we have this mm-hmm. last hour, maybe last to do this podcast. Mm-hmm. We might do like a Skype call. Our Skype call podcast again. Might. Might. You don't want to. No, I mean, see, yeah, that's 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 like our COVID ways. Yeah, I mean, I do that all the time, so it's not really a big deal. Okay. I I would almost like to talk about that more, but we just did something, and yeah, so we well, I mean, we did two things like during so, the podcast since last podcast. Yeah. So last Friday, we I. As you guys know, I went through Marvel and all that, but I've been finding Incredible Hulk, so you have access to it. So yes, uh, I watched it last Friday. <laughs> I did not enjoy it. No, I hated the pace of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the main thing, honestly. Sure. Like, if the pace was different, I feel like I would have liked it better. Yeah. Also, the writing just really suffered by the end of the film. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, so I did some looking into it, and, and Edward Norton, he actually wanted to contribute to the script and basically he, he all the had changes. a script that he wrote he did not like any of the scripts mm-hmm. but basically whatever he did was not done so which sucks and almost like I wanted to see the Norton Cup but at the same time I don't want it <laughs> sure um, yeah it like there's part of me that I'm happy that I did see it yeah because I just wanted to get out of the way um, but at the same time, unfortunately, it's a it's sad movie. Not, it's not that great a movie. Yeah, it's... No. Honestly, it was a movie that was, like, much better when it came out. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely aged poorly. And, I, and when you uh, when you say the phrase, aged poorly, sometimes I don't know what that means. You know what I mean? Sure. But now I see it. Because at the time, not that it was a great movie... But I could see it being a decent movie. But sure. Now it's Especially not a good at the movie. time, at that time in particular, the Hulk was like a very popular thing. Yeah. Because before that, Iron Man wasn't really a well-known character. Mm-hmm. All we had was like Spider-Man, Hulk, and Batman. Yeah. And then Iron Man came out and mm-hmm. started this whole thing, so it made sense for them to do Hulk second because that was like. Mm-hmm. Their other popular character. Yeah, uh, I was kind of looking at it, and basically, kind of Hulk was their failsafe plan. <laughs> like, Spider Man doesn't work well, we have the Hulk. Well, Spider Man, they couldn't. Oh, do so it. it's not Iron Man. Iron Man will do Iron Man first, that doesn't work, then Hulk will do it. And <laughs> interestingly enough, it went the other way around. Yeah, Hulk didn't really do that well. Um, but, like, this past week, I've just been really thinking after watching this movie mm-hmm. about the 2003 Hulk. Mm hmm. Feel like it's a lot better. 
It is a lot better. I almost, I almost want to see it, but at the same time, I don't feel like I'm ready for it right now. Uh, it's it's a more patient thing. It's it's the Hulk movie in two thousand three is a much different movie. Mm. It's. I bet the pacing's a lot better. Um. Uh oh. It depends on what you like about the pacing. Because mm. I just didn't like how the story was moving at all. Yeah, the, the, the two thousand three Hulk isn't really an action movie, or like a Hulk mm. smash movie. Mm -hmm. It's more of like a. Uh, a character movie about Bruce and his Which anger. I would honestly might like better because Which, I've mentioned I like the character development in the Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. So I might like that one. Sure. But yeah, Hulk action, I still love. <laughs> um, but yeah, two, 2003 Hulk movie I saw in theaters as a kid. I enjoyed it for the Hulk mainly, but I think I can appreciate the non-Hulk stuff better now. Mm -hmm. Which I, I think that movie is kind of aged better, mm -hmm. especially since the other one has aged worse. This one's kind of better now. I don't know. Yeah. It's it's strange how that works. I kind of get that, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen it, so I can't throw my two cents into that yet. Yeah. Um, back on Friday, I ranted about it a lot. And <laughs> you, you ranted, you did rant about that, yeah. yeah. Um, but we'll put that to bed because I feel like if anyone's seen it, they know. Um, I will say, though, afterwards, I was like, I, I, I tend to do like a lot of research about stuff like afterwards. Yeah. So I was looking at stuff, and so I looked at like some comments of like YouTube clips of, from that movie. And a lot of them were like, I love this Hulk so much and such. They're yeah. like, they they, 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 uh, they they don't like the, what, I forget his name, the Ruffalo. They don't like the Ruffalo. Hulk. Yeah. Which, looking at their criticisms, I kind of get. Because, and unfortunately, that's all they really can do. But Hulk is now a supporting character. You know, it has, to some degree, more personality than than the 08 Hulk because the 08 Hulk was really like except for the whole uh, whatever the girl was like he just was just trying to protect himself while I was looking like how they were like starting with Thor Ragnarok they were like oh we're gonna kind of have like a trilogy thing with the Hulk sure and and then uh, as I was looking I realized that Infinity War and Endgame were two and three. And I'm like, that is actually really stupid. Because, not that I'm, I feel like Thor Ragnarok was a good part one for I, I a feel, trilogy, I, I, but it had a better setup. And then Infinity War was the opposite of Ragnarok to a degree, which isn't bad. I feel like more people critique that. And I feel like it's not too bad, but I didn't like Smart Hole. I don't like Professor Hulk. It's not so much that I dislike him, it's more like I dislike how we got to him. Yeah. And the fact that we didn't get to him, he just showed up. Yeah. Apparently, I saw like there was supposed to be some, there was an idea that in Infinity War he would kind of transform, in the, like during the Battle of Wakanda, that he would become Smart I, Hulk. I don't know if I would like that. He would basically bolt out the Hulkbuster suit. That smart Hulk. Uh, it was actually a toy. Sold like that. Like you can actually buy it. Like apparently that was supposed to be a plot. In okay. Infinity War. So that's how it probably would have gone, man. <laughs> it would have been something. It would have been something. But yeah. But basically, their their idea is in a battle full of loss, uh, having that victory for a Ruffalo and. That battle would was just an odd choice for them. So. I mean, in battles, you should like put in little victories to help disillusion the audience to thinking, "Oh, maybe we could win this time." Mm -hmm. Which is fair. I just, but I don't. I don't like. I would. I don't know what. Uh, 
as much I was kind of I would kind of like to keep talking I would like straight away because we we just the second watched, thing we did yeah we watched Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse so that was my first time seeing that okay and so now I need to talk about that talk to me first off I remember I saw uh, it seems so out but the great showman um and one of my things about um like it, it's like a cinematic pinwheel that's why I called it have you ever seen The Greatest Showman? No. No, that's okay. That's why I called it. I don't know if anyone who's seen it will get what I'm saying, but it's... I don't know. This is also a pinwheel. I can't necessarily say cinematic because it's animated, if you know what I mean. Sure. I bet you can have a cinematic animated feature, but I'm not here to judge that for this. No. But, um... It's very visually overstimulating. I think that's a very obvious, but I was still not expecting it. <laughs> visually overstimulating. Yeah, there's a lot of color in this film. That I feel visually attacked. <laughs> not in a necessarily a bad way. I'm I'm overwhelmed. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a way to describe it. Visually attacked. <laughs> I'll never be the same again. Yeah. That was a lot of color and visual noise. Yeah, I mean it was it was an interesting visual thing to have, but yeah, it was there was a lot of it. So I mean like after watching all these live action movies. Mm -hmm. First off, seeing something animated was a different for a change. Yeah. But also, you can't do that with uh, a live action. No. Picture. You can't go to those lengths. I mean, you. I mean, you could ideally you could have the same story, but you can't have the same visual effect. You can't have the same visual effect. You can't have the same style. Mm -hmm. Even even the way they animate the characters is like. There's a reason how they animate those things mm -hmm. that are very story driven and character driven. Yeah, I um, recently watched a video. Um, it was this guy really upset of like how these people are trying to make these like 30 frame movies into 60 frame oh, stuff. Yeah, okay. Like, it, that's been a trend recently. First off, I don't like 60 frame stuff. 48, 60. I don't like it because it's different. Because we've taught our brains to watch and appreciate the 30, the 24 frames per second thing. You know what I mean? Sure. So when you see something that's 60 frames or 48 frames, your brain has to adjust to it. Just like in the Spider-Verse movie, it's basically a 12 frames per second movie, for the most part. Mm -hmm. But the, it was animated. Uh, they they touched on Spider-Verse in, in yeah. that video I watched, so that's how I know. And, you know, uh, Miles was animated in the twos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's also one of those things that, like, you notice in the movie, but you don't really think about it. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, that's that's interesting. Yeah. But you don't you just think it's oh, it's just their visual style, but mm -hmm. there's more to it, which makes it interesting. Um this, and this like also the, Well, so just with the YouTube video, like so like he was talking about just like the just a lot about like why animation is why it is, which I found very interesting. But yeah, like I said, he touched on Spider Verse and mentioned, you know, how Spider Verse was for the most part in the twos. So he did mention, I think he kind of referred to that, like the other Spider-Mans were not in the twos? Or, or? Yeah, they were, they were more smooth. Mm -hmm. Namely, especially the pig, I bet. Right. I mean, I mean, they were all like much more smoother because uh -huh. they're much more... Different. Well, they're more trained, they're more experienced. Mm. And oh, really? The, those characters are the more experienced and that's why they're much more smoother versus Miles who's untrained and that's why he's in animated in the twos. That's so interesting. And as the movie comes to an end, you see Miles 
starts to become even more animated and become more smoother by the end. I did not. Wow. Which is a cool detail that you don't really notice until yeah. you watch the behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is like another interesting experiment. Mm-hmm. Is that you haven't seen the other Spider-Man movies besides the MCU ones. Right. I heard that Tom Holland, he was su- supposed to have a cameo in it. I don't know anything about the Really? Universe. I thought I heard that somewhere. Uh, I could be wrong, but I mean, I, that's what I heard. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. Like, they, mm-hmm. they probably would do, like, some crossover type things because you know they can so that's what i was talking about earlier i was surprised if not even upset that your earlier spider-mans did not make it into this um well see well they did and they did at the same time we didn't have those actual uh characters from those movies because they wouldn't really fit this style um but they did pay tribute to those moments of those films by having it in the in like small things in the films as jokes. Um, there's definitely that one part where Spider-Man starts dancing on the street, which is from one of the movies. And that's like one of the most uh, meme things mm-hmm. from that movie. And like they just have play play with it, have fun with it, and and just stuff like that. Where if you were if you're a Spider-Man fan. And you know there's movies, we know these characters. Like, this is a great movie. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's why some people say it's, oh, it's one of the best. Because they have all this stuff that's Spider-Man, very accurate, mm-hmm. that we haven't really seen before. Mm-hmm. And now we're seeing it, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. So what are your thoughts on this movie? Like, what do you feel? Well, I uh, just wanted to get back to that real quickly. I don't know the other Spider-Mans, mm-hmm. so obviously for me, but I felt like when they were introducing the two Spider-Mans at the beginning, I assumed like those were things from the movies. Yeah, like those were like. So with that, it didn't make sense to me that they're you not didn't get the, the original. They're, they're not the exact same events that happen, but they're similar in style. I try to note. I'll try to let that go for now. I'm still like a little like... I've not seen those movies, but I don't know why I'm... Whatever. I'll try to let that go. Uh, Yeah. The movie is interesting. Mm -hmm. First off... Now, we have talked about the Spider-Verse before. We have. That's... And I'm glad we did. Because despite you saying like this movie explains it... It kind of doesn't at the same time. It it I mean, it doesn't necessarily explain it. Regardless, the movie is that. It's that concept. I mean, visualized. They kind of explain it, and they don't because, like, they say a hundred times, "You're from a parallel world," and that's kind of all you really need. Mm-hmm. And that explains it. I kind of get that, but since you're kind of new to this stuff. It's it's not really something that you just take as an answer. Yeah, that, that's it, it, a good. You I mean, know, for me, it's like you say that I have. Oh, I, I know exactly what that means because mm-hmm. it's like my scientist or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, so first off, like I said, it's visually overwhelming. Mm-hmm. I, tr- I was, I tried. I feel I feel like the pace was enough where. It, they, it didn't let you stop to try to think about it. You know what I mean? Sure. So, um, which I, for the most part, was its benefit. Mm-hmm. Um, because if so, then I would have gotten too hung up on trying to figure out the Spider-Verse instead of being invested in the story. Yeah. Um... I feel like one thing I was a little frustrated about is how the way Miles all of a sudden understood, for the most part, how to be Spider-Man. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things where it's like, I watch it, I'm kind of like, 
Yeah, I mean, that's not really how that works, but I get it. You gotta have that heroic moment where he gets it and can be the character. But sure, I get where you're coming at. I, I had that same thought. That was it. frustrating. First off, I knew that he would get it. I didn't ex I didn't however I didn't expect him to get it like that now I didn't have a concept in my mind of how he would get it mm -hmm. but at the same time because I mean first off with him like breaking free from the webs I could have interpreted that as oh that was an accident he somehow got free you know what I mean I... just like how everything else was an accident in the past. He never meant to turn invisible. Mm -hmm. He never meant to shock the man. And ideally, we could argue he never meant to break free from the webs, but unfortunately, to a degree, he understood everything that he could break free. Mm -hmm. So, like, he broke free from the webs. He left and went to see Aunt May. And I assumed that he was going to Aunt May so that Maybe she could help him, which she she kind of did. You know, she got she got him gear. She got him gear. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe like some of it, I could forgive, and some of it I can't. Like, it, it's definitely one of those things where it's like we have to get into our third act now, and our character needs to be at a certain point. Because the main thing was the other Spider Mans were already heading out, so they had to speed that up. Sure, yeah. It's still frustrating to me because I don't like it. Because that's one of the things why I've mentioned and why I don't really like movies is because it, some things are like that. Where it's not realistic and in the end it makes me frustrated. And yeah, this is like a progression that I feel we can compare to the Hulk where we have Hulk becoming Professor Hulk and there, that's a big disconnect. Where here I think there's like a much better connection. Well, with Professor Hulk, though, it's not visualized. We had five years of nothing where that ideally happened. Apparently, there's a line of him spending 18 months in a gamma lab, and he turned into that or something like that. Yeah. So, it was mentioned. It wasn't visualized. Does it make sense? No, but at least we know there was a process to it. That didn't happen overnight. Eh... I mean, it kind of did happen overnight from the audience perspective. True. Because, like, the last we saw him, it's like he couldn't even turn into the Hulk. Mm -hmm. And now he's completely Hulk and he's smart, smart Hulk. Yeah. And so from the audience viewing perspective, it's like, oh, it just happens overnight. Mm -hmm. From That's fair. Miles' character, you know from the beginning that this is a journey of him becoming Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And so when he finally becomes it, even though, yes, realistically... He wouldn't be that pro, mm -hmm. but you you do know that this is where his journey was leading up to. I mean, there is uh, what Peter B. Parker said. Um, like, sometimes the best way to learn is in the moment, which I 100% agree. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I can buy some of that. You know what I mean? Which is a lot of Spider-Man in general, where he just... He does things mm -hmm. and just does it in the moment. And that's where a lot of his great characterization comes from because he's just, he just reacts to everything. Mm -hmm. That's what, what's, that's what's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. There's, I'm not, I don't hate the movie, mm -hmm. right? I like it better than The Incredible Hulk. Sure. Yeah. I like it better than The Avengers. Interesting. Okay. Well, you know, The Avengers is basically my least favorite besides Hulk. Yeah, I know. Um, I mean, I definitely say it's better than The Avengers, but yeah. Why were you surprised then? No, I, I just I just had to think about it for a moment. Okay. Um, it's one of those... Here's the thing. I, I probably even said the same thing with Iron Man. Uh -huh. It's probably one of those things that I have to sit with, think about, and really process to get and understand and appreciate. With Iron Man, I believe that was the same thing. 
but I knew I liked the character of Tony Stark, though. Mm. And so with Marvel, I know how Marvel works now, or at least MCU. Yeah. I know how the MCU works that I can process things faster and better. Just in general, for me, it takes time for me to process. And, and hey, honestly, like, if you saw uh, sat with me with an MCU movie, I would still kind of be like this. I'd be sputtering a little bit, trying to, sure. like, you know, be like, all right, I still need to process it a little bit, but I understand the process of MCU a little more. They have a formula and such, which, to a degree, it's unfortunate when you do have a formula. But at the same time... They know how to sell, and they've sold me, or I'm sold. I'm sold to the formula for mm -hmm. now. Um, but um, again, I think part of it is still my lack of understanding of Spider-Man. Like for for all I knew, there was one Spider-Man, <laughs> kind of like just all the Spider-Mans in their universes. But uh, mm -hmm. like there was only one Spider-Man, and you know I saw him on every kid's lunchbox and. All this such, and then this whole multiverse thing is still ridiculous to me. You know what I mean? It's so fantastic that it's hard to believe. Um, and uh, while this movie was a decent representation of it, it's still like out there. But I will say, um, I can't say. I love the villain that much. Yeah, it's it's not my favorite interpretation of this villain, but it's more so I I know the villain because like I know all the other versions of that villain. Mm -hmm. And like they're great, and mm -hmm. so I put that greatness on this one mm -hmm. just from association mm -hmm. of the character. And it's the same with, like, all their other villains, where they don't really have a lot to shine, mm -hmm. but it's like, I know how those characters are, I know who they are, mm -hmm. and that's where I get the association. So, the other villains, you don't know any of them. No. I mean, so, except from the Holland movies. And it, no, no, none of them were in those movies. I mean, the older movies. Yeah, I bet. I mean, you know the movies. You have Doc Ock, and this in this version, the twist in this one is that Doc Ock is a girl. Uh huh. But or, that's because it's a different universe, which works in this movie. Uh huh. Like that's how I can work with a gender change. Isn't Doc say. Ock or some octopus character supposed to be in the New Holland movie? Potentially. I thought that but, was confirmed. I mean, here's the thing. You, you say confirmed. Who knows? It's like. Is Garfoot in it or not? Who well, knows? Appar <laughs> well, apparently, didn't he say no? I mean, he, he said, I didn't get the call, but, it, I, you know, it doesn't really matter. Because it's like, he's not going to say yes. We know he's not going to say yeah. Like, he can't say yes unless they say yes, but it's... But at the same time, how else do you interpret, I didn't get the call? What does that mean, then? It means that his agent got the call, not him. It, it could mean something else. Uh, but it's it's definitely one of those things where we won't really know until we see it. Because I feel like at this point, if he is in it, it's a cameo. Not <laughs> not like Peter B. Parker in this movie. Sure, I, I'm not really expecting a big role, but I don't know. <sighs> Again, it's one of those things where we'll have to see when it happens. So it's getting warm. It it is thick. I'm turning on the car. I again, I just have a hard, hard disconnect. Also, with just how Miles all of a sudden was able to get it. That's not really my biggest concern in the movie. I think my my biggest Eddie gripe of this movie is like I feel like we. I really wanted to just see more of the other Spider-Man characters. Because they kind of show up. It's like, I know they're going to show up. I know we're going to see other versions. Mm -hmm. But they, they kind of show up in this thing. And it's like, oh, okay, they're cool. But then we don't really have a, a lot of, like, moments. 
just them. But it also wouldn't make sense if it was just them. I don't think. What, what do you mean? If it was... If there are moments of them... Because the, th the thing is, this story like, revolves around Miles. I understand that it's like... The story doesn't have m enough time to just... Deeply get into all these characters. Which is why you have to stick with your main three. But still, I really would have loved to see more of the other ones. It's nothing that really brings the movie down. It's just wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. I feel like if it was to do that, it'd be more for the fans and it really advancing the movie. Sure, unless, you know... I've, if there's potential that those characters be expanded, it's the second movie. Right, yes, and we'll see when that happens. Um, but I'll, Even though I think the second one is more mm -hmm. so going to expand the relationship between Miles and Gwen. Yeah, I feel that too. Which... <sighs> it's comic accurate. To, to have two... Those two? There are, are a couple in the comics, yeah. No, 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 no. Are they in different universes in the comics? I think so, yes. How do you do that? Back and forth? I think, like, that's what they're... That's what the end credits is insinuating, yeah. is that... I mean, unless they're able to explain it, which they probably won't... No, I mean, like, the end credits explaining the, the after credits scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know. With the thing... But they're not... Again, with this, they didn't necessarily explain the multiverse, so they're probably not going to explain this jumping thing. You know what I mean? Uh, so it, they, I mean, they will explain the jumping thing, but you're just not going to get it. I mean, I get it. I'm glad you do. Like, I understand it. But it's... I just... Um, I don't have a problem with Miles and Gwen. I don't. Okay. My issue is the whole, the fact that they're in different universes thing. I can't get that. I I don't know what's so hard to get. Maybe it'll take me time, but right now I don't get it. <laughs> but I wanted to go back to Kingpin though. Sure. Um, like I, I get. Like, uh, with, with Iron Man 3, like, one reason why I don't like it is because uh, the villain's motive, or here's the thing, the reason why he got mad is because Tony Stark did not meet up with him. And that, I'm like, that's a stupid reason to become a villain. I mean, there's more to it, but that's, like, the main one they showed. And is there more in the comics? Is that what? It's, it's not really that. It's more like, more of a build-up of things, and, like, that's, like... A triggering point. Yeah, but it's a terrible trigger. Sure, yeah. I mean, it really depends on how you view it, but yeah, it's not that great. Anyways, uh, what I'm saying is, like, uh, one reason why... And I'm not saying that King Pen was the reason why I don't like this. First off, I didn't say I don't like this movie. But, it... In the end, the villain is the whole reason the movie happens. Right? Yes. Now, Miles still could have gotten bitten by a spider. Yes. But, the point is... There would have been no multiverse in this... If it wasn't for Kingpin. There would have been practically no story with this without Kingpin. So or or end, you do a different way to do the story. You could find a different way, but for Which this... There are different ways, but I think this was like the simplest way to do it without mm -hmm. getting into that complicated stuff that they do in the comic as well. So regardless, at least for this movie, in the end, the villain does drive the story, right? Yeah. Or he, he, he allows the story to happen. Yeah. So then that's why I see it so important to look at the motive of the villain. It's simple. I will it's, I will give him this. Family does mean a lot to people. Sure. Yeah. Right? That, I mean it's it's a good motive. It's an understandable one, but it's 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 a very simple one. Okay, like maybe like the motive I get okay, maybe the motive's fine. I guess the issue is the execution. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Especially his backstory is told very quickly, and like you get everything you need from yeah. that. But it's still, I don't, I, 
I'm not against that. Yeah. I, I'm just saying like, so he felt like the only way was to do what he did. Mm. I mean, you can argue, yes, that was the only way to do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, it, it kind of does speak to the fact of how ruthless of a move it was. But the this is my issue, okay? I understand he doesn't care about anybody else. Okay? I can buy that. I can... What I don't buy is the fact that he's literally destroying the universe. So he could get his family back. But he can't get his universe or his home back. So he literally is reunited with his family. But that's all he has. You don't even have a life to live at that point if you've destroyed... I mean, at that, at that point, you're with your family and that's all he cares about. Uh, uh, you'll get bored after I mean, it's, two days. It's it's one of those things that's like... It's an, it's an every villain type thing. It's like, oh, destroy the world. Yada, yada. It's like, you madman, you kill us all. It's like, shut up. I mean, I kind of get that. It, it's, it's definitely one of those things where it's like, it's it's a go-to thing that has to happen. It's like, oh, you destroy us all. It's like, shut up. I'm at work. I'm depressed. Oh. Mm-hmm. Give me back my family. It just it doesn't sit well with me right now. Uh, like, I kind of get that. Like, in the end, they don't really care. But at the same time, honestly, after... Two days with your family, you're tired of them. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you have a universe or not. And then it was, but it was interesting how they kind of teased the fact that because they are from a different universe, he'd practically have to start all over with them. Sure. So, which also is a touch the end game with uh, Peter Quill and Gamora. Sure. So it really wouldn't have worked on them anyways. <laughs> You get him back, and honestly, you'd have to start all over with them. Better than nothing, I guess. In his mind. Sure, in his mind, it's better than nothing. So, I don't know. It's, it also just seems. I'm, I'm. It's always incredible seeing like the crazy lengths a villain will go. Like, I guess maybe because I'm so simple-minded. Like, I'm a guy. Who just generally will follow the rules for the most part. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if I'm to get in trouble, I'm going to find out a way where I know I'm not going to get in trouble. You know what I mean? But for him, like if it really failed on him, it failed. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. He's in trouble. There's no way to, you know, to to escape his fate. You know what I mean? Sure. But, I mean, like, I think a little bit like Ant-Man. Like, like that villain in there, like, he could have done his dirty deed, but he still would have been in the background. Now, then again, Ant-Man brought him, you know, to light and destroyed and all that, you know. Like, it, he ended up having to go to fantastical lengths to destroy Ant-Man. Sure. I'm not saying those methods weren't... I mean, not necessarily as a villain, but as a character or a person or a personality. He was more or less just filled with rage that his plan was foiled. But he had a plan how to do things completely undercover. Mm-hmm. But also it speaks to here in uh, Kingpin, like, in the end, whatever he did, he the only thing that drove him to do what he did was his family. And emotion. Like, yeah. That's the crazy thing. Emotion always blinds you. But also, yeah. one thing I found interesting with this is that he practically had superpowers without being super. You know what I mean? That is the thing about Kim Ping, is that he is strong. Okay. He's very strong. Okay. He's big. Uh-huh. Not normally as big as that, but mm-hmm. he's big. I don't know if there's, like, a full, real explanation on it, other than that he's just determined. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Like, he is determined. Okay. And one random thing I was thinking as I was watching it, like, 
if I had the opportunity to make a suit for myself, uh-huh. it would be like Iron Man's. Because I'm like looking at that Spider-Man suit and it's just spandex. Like, you know what I mean? Like, unless you have the iron iron suit from, I don't know, the, the Last Avenger movie. It's, it's also one of those things where it's like having it be as free-flowing as it is. Uh-huh. You could be more of your acrobatic self as Spider-Man. And I kind of get that with the, this whole Spidey sense thing where, like, that's kind of... What do you... Why are you making that face? I mean, it's... Uh, is Spidey Sense only in the MCU? And then am uh, I putting myself to shame right now? No, you're not putting yourself to shame. I'm just I'm just not seeing the connection here. With... Because in the whole... The, was it Far From Home? Yeah. The way that he did not get killed in that one was because no, of his Spidey yeah, Sense. Yeah, no, no. I, I know Spidey Sense. I'm just trying to understand, like, what does Spidey Sense have to do with being acrobatic in the suit? Being flowy. That he... Ideally, doesn't need armor in the end. Sure, I, I mean, there is a version of Spider-Man with the armor. Uh huh. But that's like another universe type thing. Okay. But yeah, I was just thinking for myself, like, like that 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 Iron Man suit is like just perfect because he uh, literally Tony Stark is just like a normal man, and he's like, oh. I need to protect myself. With a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of money, very smart, but he was able to make a suit to protect himself. Literally, that's all that suit is. It's protection with some firearm. And so, like, all... You kind of think about, like, all the other characters, like, they can kind of protect themselves for themselves, and Iron Man kind of cannot unless he has a suit. Right. And so, like, I was thinking, like, if I ever needed a, a suit... A superhero suit. It would be Iron Man's. Because I know it will protect me. Okay. It was just a thought that came to my mind as I was watching. There is one thing with this film that isn't really quite something that brings it down. But if it's like not really ever addressed, it probably could. Mm -hmm. The spider. Uh Uh-huh. Continue. The spider isn't really explained about where it comes from. We can visually figure it out that it's from another universe Mm -hmm. but we don't know from where or how or why Mm -hmm. it's something that kind of has to be explained in the sequel you think it has to be explained? I think it should because just oh spider there in the sewers right where he's doing it that's convenient Well, versus it was also very convenient that the whole thing was like the the gateway into all this was there, right? I I guess that's true, that the gateway was close to that location, but it's still, eh, still kind of convenient. Versus Peter going to a place where the spiders are and gets bit accidentally. I mean that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, no, it makes more sense. What do you mean? Why would you go to a place where spiders, uh, spiders are? And so the, I'm, that's a very oversimplification, but he goes on a field trip to like a science lab, and like there's a missing spider, and he gets bit by it. So they were experimenting on these spiders. Yes, like that. That is the explanation, and I know what the explanation is, but they they haven't explained it in this movie really. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm saying they have to get that thing explained. So are you saying that spider is from that lab? I don't. It's not from that lab. I don't think it's from that universe. So you think it should be explained? It, I, I think it should. I mean, I'll be like, no, I don't. I don't need a ten-minute explanation. I mean, I'll be okay if it's explained, but I'm not going to die if it's not. Personally, it's not that I'm going to die. It's just like it's just more like. Once a series ends, I look back on that thing ten years from now, mm-hmm. and I see that moment where this pea gets bit by a spider. It's like, what the heck is that spider doing there? Mm-hmm. Where did he come from? Oh, it's a spider. You know, I know, I know the reason, because I know the, the character history. Mm-hmm. It's like you gotta, you gotta explain it to your audience mm-hmm. a bit, just like the multiverse. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to 
<laughs> sure, yeah. Uh-huh. That's a thing. Uh, anything else we gotta say about this movie? Why? So you're, you're saying people love it because it, it feels like a Spider-Man movie. Or it brings together Spider-Man. It's just a really well-told story. Uh-huh. I mean, origins of the Spider-Man, of that Spider-Man character. Uh-huh. Miles Morales. Um, with an interesting version of that older Spider-Man character. Yeah. And then... Which I will say, like, for a quippy character, I feel like they kind of pulled out the Peter B. Parker character well. Sure. For one who might be, you know... Like, sometimes in the MCU, I get kind of upset at, like, the quippy characters. Or quippy lines. And I feel like it worked for him in this movie. Yeah, like, quippiness works better for Spider-Man. That I feel like they just use too much for the other characters. Mm -hmm. Not to say that they can't be quippy, it's just... It's more like, it's more like Spider-Man's thing, and that's why people like him. Mm. It's like, he's really funny. Mm -hmm. Um... I, I'm, I feel like part of the reason why I'm not sold on it is because it's different. Sure. Yeah. It's not part of the MCU. It's animated. I, I honestly like. I have no problem with Miles. I have no problem with him or mm -hmm. the character. Like honestly, like that isn't necessarily an issue to me. Like a, especially after watching the Incredible Hulk, like I can buy the fact that there's a different Spider-Man. Honestly, you know what I mean. I know technically in Incredible Hulk it's the same guy, but it's in a different actor. But like I can buy the fact that it's a different Spider-Man in a different universe. Like maybe like again I'm still like the multiverse is still a little weird. But like I can kinda of, like buy the fact that it's a different Spider-Man. Sure, yeah. But it's still like It's still like a new concept to you. Yeah. That you haven't really had as much time to understand it. Yeah. Or just to really appreciate it. And not to mention the fact that the movie is, again, we just visually saw overstimulating. We just saw it just like an hour ago. Yeah. So, like, you're still processing it. Yeah. So It takes me a long while to process. That's honestly one reason why I don't like doing reactions. Because you, I, I have to get my thoughts about the song. Sure. There's some, there's some like merit to like you know seeing a first reaction, and those initial thoughts you know can be so drastically different to how I you will eventually think about it, and especially for a song. First off, like I work better with songs. Like I, I'm more of that music person, so I feel like you, like I can explain my thoughts about a song better than I can about a movie. So like I can. Op kind of do it whereas I'm the opposite <laughs> but at the same time like I especially hate being held to my thoughts of the songs initially because some people are like oh I thought you said you didn't like it yeah that was my initial thoughts now I like it or something like that um like th again there's some merit to first thoughts but honestly I prefer review personally for me in terms of giving them I prefer reviews over reactions mm -hmm. because I've be been able to process it and now I can say, okay, this is what I think about it. And really explain the details, why this and why that. Instead of react. Now again, like I said, merits to reaction. Sometimes, honestly, they're needed. They're, first off, reactions are fun to watch. Yeah, right? they, they're really fun. And again, hearing someone's thoughts for the first time, really great. But I have a hard time um, explaining myself with my thoughts first time especially mm -hmm. watching something and music can be difficult as well but you kind of just get used to when when you're doing the movie sorry the youtube videos like that you kind of just get used to it and you and despite even not really been in being able to think about something you you find something to say um and then sometimes like some uh, like i've had a friend like sometimes he play a couple songs for me and really i don't have that much to say Maybe if it, I was recording a YouTube video, I would think of stuff to say. But as it relates to, um, yeah, I just speaking speaking of YouTube, I kind of realized I wasn't able to do the second non-metal hits. Try to keep it banging. Nope. 
which I'm kind of sad about, but at the same time, this semester was really crazy for me that I was just too overwhelmed to do a second one, which mm -hmm. makes me sad because I really wanted to do a second one. And I know people wanted to see a second one, but then helped I got sick in March and then it was just so overwhelmed in April. Yeah. And then, like, honestly, I've had time, especially the last week, to do it. Uh, I've been so drained that it was... It, it's just so exhausting right yeah now. so yeah that didn't happen unfortunately if if I stick around in Lynchburg for a bit I might be able to coordinate something but I am not gonna promise that sure yeah. so I, I, I should make a notice about the fact I'm not doing this at all right yeah, and so that's where we are we uh, watched the two movies mm-hmm and um we're just getting ready to just close things off. There are, like, I've, I've been doing my time at Liberty, but, you know, it's been, like, especially this semester, it's kind of just been, like, I just wanted to get it over with. I'm ready to kind of, like, move on. But then there are moments like this, doing this podcast or going to campus community or pick your whatever, and you just kind of think, like, I'm going to miss all this, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no other time in my life when I'm ever going to experience something like this again. You know? School is difficult, yeah, but I'm never going to have this again. And even if I go to college again, I'm older. And it's going to be a different life. I might be married and might have kids. And it's not going to be like this. I'm not going to be living in a dorm. I'm not going to have this type of free time. Mm -hmm. And... Like, I hope we can still record. I don't know how often. It's every week awesome if it's occasionally awesome. But this was a great idea of yours. How, I mean, we were able to connect in this way. Mm -hmm. um, be able to talk about things. Because you're not very talkative in real life. No, I'm not. <laughs> so to be able to coax some words out of you and be able to have some conversations with you has been fun and as a result like you're a good friend I appreciate like the things you've done for me and yeah I've it's been a pleasure oh yeah you're one of the few uh, people I've had for the past four years same with you Christopher you know I don't I don't really talk to a lot of people so it's good to have like a consistent person to do it with, you know. Mm -hmm. There are times where it's like, oh, I'm dead. I don't want, I don't know if I have the energy to do it, but it's like, you gotta get the energy. Mm -hmm. It's Christopher McCoy. You gotta do it. There have been many days where I've been so dead. <laughs> uh, I feel like I've bailed on you more than you have on me. Many days. <laughs> It's almost like every podcast I'd be like, like, I'm so tired. It's like, hey, it's like, hey, like you, you walk into the door, my home. My dad or my mom asks, like, hey, Christopher, how are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> that was your first thing that you said. And I, I just almost, I almost wanted to just say something. I'd be like, hmm, I want to bet or something. You know, I lost it last time. Oh, you did? Yeah, because the one time I actually, like, I'm going to make this guess that he's going to say it this time. But you don't actually say it. <laughs> Maybe internally you should just think that all the time, and I won't, and I'll think of something else. Mm -hmm. That might work. Yeah. Who so, knows? So, yeah, you've been... <laughs> stop being tired now. You don't have this. You'll be tired about other things. I, I wonder, what was the first thing I said last time? Was it last time? I don't remember if it was last time. I, I guess I'd have to go back and listen at this point. Yeah, go and listen. Oh my gosh. That is... It's still fun And support us on Acres. You know, one dollar makes, makes all, all the difference. difference. I don't even remember what you said last time. I like my joke. I like how he said it wrong. Did I like your joke? No, of course you didn't. What? But then I remembered the other joke I did that you really didn't like. Was that when there was a lull, I would say, oh, well, that's all the time we have, or something. Or, no, I was just you know, immediately saying, thank you so much for listening. You mean like when there's like a long pause? Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. Yeah, thank you. We we'll see you all next time. Bye. Well, well wait, really? Yeah, really. Crap. Well, okay. Uh, do you want do you want to say some? Just, just. <laughs> I'm like, I kind of knew you were insinuating at that, but I didn't like, that was, I thought you were like going to stop it midway. Okay. Okay. But again, it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. Mm -hmm. Thank you again for, you know, again, it, starting this, making, and, you know, insisting that this be sure. consistent. It's been fun. And so, uh, again, it, like, thank you. Probably the next time that we do something, we definitely are going to have to do that interview with my friend. With that a, you wanted to with do? With the sound guy, yes. Yeah. Was that what we were supposed to do in March? Uh, we were supposed to do that in March, then you got sick. Yeah. Uh, I For me, definitely, like, probably, I don't know, we might be better to do it during the summer. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll try to make time. Yeah. Um, obviously, we'll see what I'm doing, but I, it's possible we can make time. But yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. All right. Again, you saw how it was in March. I didn't even see you in March. Yes, you did. There was the one time I came to your table when you were at Chick Fil A. Yes. Yeah, I wasn't doing well. Okay. No, you saw it, right? I, I guess. I, yeah. Audience, just I'm I, just I, making sure, sure you know yes, I wasn't I doing well. I believe you, Christopher. I saw you. I don't know. Here's the thing with me. Sometimes I have a hard time like wondering if people trust and believe me. You know what I mean? So like, especially like, talking to my professor. My professor believed me. I'm so thankful, but I felt so bad because I missed practically a month of classes, you know what I mean? And so I'm like, because I didn't want her to think I was faking just to get out of classes, which I wasn't, you know what I mean? But just like inside, I'm just like, does she think so? And so like sometimes I just have that fear. Anyway, so again, it's been an honor, it's been a pleasure doing this, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So I am ready to yes, close it let's, out. Yes, let's close it out. So yeah, once again, thank you guys for listening. We'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Yeah, bye. Bye. Stewart.